So MCAT scores are out and I just got mine back and somehow I managed to score higher on the actual exam than I did on any practice full lengths. So let's talk about what I did to study because if you know anything about MCAT prep, it is excruciatingly expensive. So I'm just gonna delve into what I did and if I thought it was worth the money or not and what I would do differently if I had to do this again. Anyways, let's start off what I did that I didn't have to pay for that I would do every single day I was studying. Starting out, I would do the amino acid quiz on my phone multiple times a day and that's just a really easy way to memorize all the amino acids, their structures, the shorthand for them. Then I would do my Anki for the day and I preferred to use the Miles Down deck. I tried to use, I believe the Jack Sparrow one first and it was just like a little bit too much. I didn't love the formatting of the cards or the way the questions were asked on the flashcards. So I tried out Miles Down and I just preferred that. I really do think it's just up to your personal preference with that stuff, but I got that resource from Reddit. Then I would go into writing out any kind of systems or processes I would need to know. So the main ones I remember writing out the most would be glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, and the Krebs cycle. Also, let me be your sign that you do not necessarily need an iPad in order to succeed not only at the MCAT, but just like under grad in general because I tried using this thing I don't know why because I ended up going back to my notebooks anyways now let's get to the stuff I spent money on and I am going to be frank with you I think I spent too much money starting off with the blueprint course I did I did the MCAT self-paced course for six months of access and it cost a whopping ready one thousand seven hundred dollars I think Blueprint is like most MCAT courses nowadays, where once you get the actual course, it'll automatically auto-populate kind of a schedule for you to use that's supposed to be somewhat tailored to your needs. So your whole day is basically broken up into those modules, and every module is going to be comprised of the same thing. So starting off, they're going to give you like a pre-diagnostic quiz situation, right? And if you are good enough at the topic, they'll even give you the option to skip the module entirely. But if you proceed with it, basically every single topic is going to be broken down into smaller subtopics so it's more digestible. And after those videos, they are going to ask you to take a little quiz to see if you've retained that information, if you grasp the concepts that you want. And then at the end of the module entirely, you've finished all the videos, you've finished all the little quizzes between, they're going to give you a final little quiz. And depending on what the topic is, they could even send you to an end of chapter exam that would line up with their textbook. I personally did not use a textbook because I hate textbooks. I have heard people like them a lot, but the thing is, if you are not a very quick reader, it can be very time consuming. And the name of the game with the MCAT is efficiency. Also, a lot of people don't really like spending a ton of time on just doing content review as a whole. Other than the modules, Blueprint also has these live stream kind of things where they will go over very specific topics. And I personally didn't really use them one because even though they're recorded because I couldn't attend them at the time that they were occurring I found that they weren't really useful but I have friends who use blueprint that absolutely raved about them so they do seem to work for others if you can make the time for it blueprint also has their own practice full lengths which are supposed to model the AMC material but um from my own opinion and a lot of others people's opinions on like reddit and whatnot the blueprint MCAT practice exams seem to be a little bit more difficult and far more math heavy than the real AMC exams. Not only because they'll ask you just straight up more questions that will involve a calculation somehow. I think there's also a difference in the type of calculation you'll be asked to do. When my friends and I were discussing it, we found that the blueprint practice exams, the calculations were a lot more lengthy and detail oriented, while um, like the AMC ones, you could possibly recognize the formula that they're wanting to be used and kind of use the logic to get your way through it. After that, you have the Blueprint QBank and I just ended up not really using that because I favor the AMC material. Then they had a journal, which they're really intent on you using to kind of log how your progress is, what you have the most difficulties with. But quite frankly, I found that it was far too time consuming for it to actually be beneficial to me. And I felt like it was just this annoying extra step that they wanted me to do. And finally, they had analytics, flashcards, and then a whole bunch of PDFs with like mnemonics and stuff. For the flashcards, I didn't really end up using it just because I would use Anki instead. And for the PDF, they had they were useful but because they go over a lot of the stuff mentioned in them while you're doing the actual modules at the end of the day it just felt like 
an added on thing that I didn't necessarily need, but I could see being useful to others. While we're on the topic of PDFs, during the modules, you can use a PDF provided by Blueprint to kind of follow along and make sure you're getting all the information they want you to. However, that's kind of like a fill in kind of worksheet. And I just found that I couldn't get through the videos nearly fast enough when I had to do them. And because sometimes, because these PDFs, to my knowledge, are AI generated, they would just be like awkwardly worded and like there would be points where I would be trying to figure out what the word they wanted me to put in the blank was and I literally could not figure it out so I'd end up googling it and it would seem that everybody else was also confused. So that just might be a thing that they need to tweak in the future. I could see how it's useful to have it but it was like at the end I think I used those PDFs for about a week before giving up on them so hmm. was it worth it to spend $1,700 on this MCAT course for me? Don't get me wrong, I still found it useful, I still thought that there were some strong points, but just for content review, which is what I was mainly using it for, and it's practice exams, I think in the long run, it wasn't the best. And next up is another heavy hitter, which is U World. If you don't know what it is, I'll put like a little blurb somewhere on the screen just explaining it. But I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I like U World. Especially for the MCAT, I know in medical school, people feel like it's their holy grail, but like, let me explain why I didn't feel so great about this. For three out of the four sections on the MCAT, I was a pretty like adequate scorer you know what i mean like on cars that was an easy that was a breeze for me love it cars is my baby in fact i even have a whole youtube video on cars because like it was my comfort zone right bio biochem i also really liked that i was able to get my score up without doing U world on its own just by doing contra review and solidifying the information in my head and lastly for psych soch it was kind of just a similar thing to bio where once i was doing the anki and consolidating all the information and all the definitions I needed to use, I found that UWorld wasn't really helping me. In fact, it started confusing me more. Note I left out ChemFizz. If I could tailor UWorld in a subscription that I think would work best for me and be like the most useful, it would solely be one for the chemistry and physics section. Just because that's the one I had the most difficulty with, I, it literally drove me crazy. Um, and I just think that that would be the only section I would think that UWorld would help me out more. If I had to go back and change anything about the way I studied, maybe it would just be to do more UWorld for ChemFizz. I had the 180 day subscription and I paid a total of $360 approximately for it. And uh, I just don't think it was worth it for me. Maybe it would have helped my ChemFizz score, but I think for $360 to only focus on the one subject, it wasn't the best. Finally, let's talk about probably the most important and most valuable resource you're going to use for the MCAT, which is the AMC material. This is straight from the makers of the exam, and everybody who has taken it will probably tell you if you're going to use anything, use this. I was really fortunate and my early medical program actually gave us a subscription, but I looked it up and if you are having to pay it out of pocket, regularly it's around $365, but there seems to be a bundle where you can get it for $310. So in the subscription that I got, I had six practice exams, including their free practice exam that I think you can just get straight from their website, the free sample test, which is unscored, but you can find the scoring rubric somewhere online. It's always floating around somewhere on Reddit. And then the four actual full length exams. And I'm gonna tell you something, just this is my opinion. I'm not so certain that the full length exams on the AMC site are super representative of the actual MCAT anymore. I took my exam on January 16, 2025, and I just felt like the exams I took were not very similar to them. Um, not only in structure, but the content they hit on. And listen, I know that every exam is going to have like a different kind of set of questions, topics they hit on, which is fine. But like on my exam personally, I found, especially in the chem phys section, that they didn't hit on any of the general high yield material we thought they were going to. And so, yeah, I feel like that's an entire video in and of itself. So let me know if you want to know more about that. It's just, I feel a little bit weird about their practice exams now. However, they are still probably the best out of any you will do, so most definitely do them. And then there are a whole bunch of other practice products, so I'm just going to read them off to you. There is the biology question pack, volumes one and two, the cars diagnostic tool, the chemistry question pack, um, two more cars question packs that are just reasoning stuff, volumes one and two, independent question bank, um, the physics one, and then the two last ones are the official section banks 
volumes one and volume two and those are the ones that everybody has been talking about recently because everyone feels that those last two question packs the section banks in general are the most representative of how the exam is now in 2025 and personally i agree so whatever subscription you get please 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 get the section banks in them also if you are going to be using the amc material get the jack weston google chrome extension it's completely free it will help with the formatting of the actual questions because once you use it you'll find that that's not what the mcat actually looks like when you're doing the questions and it can be a little disorienting so the jack weston google chrome extension will fix that for you and the thing i love the most is that they give you exp um, explanations for each answer in layman's terms the amc explanations for questions are a little weird because sometimes they'll straight up just be like it's right because it's right and that doesn't help you out of all of the tools that i used on this portal i found that my favorites were the cars diagnostic tool it was actually the only thing i used to study for cars and it wound up being my highest score overall and then um the section banks the section banks i'm going to tell you right now they are so difficult you're going to score terribly in fact but if you can go through everything and figure out the real reasoning behind the answers to the questions it will do you wonders i swear but it is really disheartening when you're first going at it and I, believe me i know a thing or two about being disheartened about this exam and lastly i'm going to tell you something i did for free that benefited me maybe above most of the things i paid for and that was doing a full length analysis in depth on google sheets after every single exam i took and when i say in depth i mean i would spend like seven hours the day after my exam just like going through every single question explaining why i got it right why i got it wrong linking to resources and videos about how i did what i did what i could do different and it helped me so so much however i'm not going to share the spreadsheet i used right here because i actually was really fortunate to have an alumni from the program i was in share hers with me just remember you have to list off your questions the question itself um maybe the topic that the question is and and then like an expl explanation section of like why you got something wrong it's very easy to do make sure you tailor it to yourself so yeah that's what i did to study for the mcat and somehow i scored a whole two points higher than my general mcat scores on all my practices which wild